Hey everyone, today I wanted to review the Cars 2 video game, specifically the DS and 3DS versions. I feel like these versions of the game are really underappreciated and not very well known, even among Cars fans. I haven't seen anyone do a, a review video of this game yet, so I decided that I should do one for myself. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll see why I think these versions are even better than their console counterparts. With that in mind, let's get started. Let's start off with the game's story mode, which is already an improvement over the console version since it really didn't have much of a story. Starting off, we're greeted with an announcer explaining how, if things go well for him, Lightning McQueen could win his fourth Piston Cup. We start off with a rolling start and the race begins. I really like that they included this Piston Cup race, since we didn't get to see it at all in the movie. This race features three never seen before Piston Cup racers, all with unique sponsors. The light blue one is sponsored by RSN, the other one is sponsored by Globy, and the gray one is sponsored by All in All. These racers don't have official names, so I decided to give them some. Daniel Turner, Jamie Joyride, and Derek Daylight. Anyway, back to the story. Lightning manages to win the race, and once he gets back to Radiator Springs, he tells his best friend Mater that he's been invited to the World Grand Prix and would like him to come along. Mater thinks long and hard about it. I'm in. The game then cuts to an oil rig where Finn McMissile is trying to sneak around and gather intel without being caught by the lemons. While avoiding searchlights, he sees a lot of the lemons transporting crates with the letters WGP on them. He eventually discovers that the crates have cameras inside which are going to be used to sabotage the World Grand Prix. Finn gets caught, he has to make a quick getaway. After Finn manages to escape, the game cuts back to Radiator Springs where Mater has convinced some dirt racers to race lightning to help him get used to going from dirt to road. Lightning questions this at first, but then realizes that it could be good training. I think this was really a good way to introduce the player to types of courses they'll see in this game. The game is pretty straightforward after this. After you win an event, you unlock the next one, and the story continues from there. This game was developed by Firebrand Games, and they're well known for their DS racing games. They were the ones who developed the DS ports of Race Driver Grid, Trackmania DS, and Colin McRae's Dirt 2. With all of that experience with racing games, I think they did the driving physics in this game pretty well considering the hardware limitations. You can either take corners by turning normally or using a drift, which is kind of broken, but it's useful for some really tight turns in the game. Each character in the game has their own special ability which allows them to do things like jump or drive backwards. Most of the courses allow you to use these abilities to take shortcuts to get ahead, but I never really needed to do this because of the game's really easy difficulty. Sadly, there isn't a way to change the difficulty, which is a bit disappointing, but there's always a local multiplayer. Something that's really great about this game is how we get to know some of the World Grand Prix racers that didn't even speak in the movie. McQueen usually talks to them for a while and then they end up having some kind of race. Once you finish that, Francesco challenges you to a one-on-one -on -one race to see who is truly the best. The rivalry grows throughout the story and it really reminds me of the rivalry Lightning and Chick had in the first Cars game. Lightning McQueen, do you hear that? Hear what? The silence of your fan. Mine they cheer for me. Funny, I don't hear anything. You don't usually see this kind of stuff in DS games, and it almost feels like they managed to put a whole console game onto a DS cartridge. This game does manage to have cutscenes, but they mostly consist of two characters talking to each other, and they have a certain charm to them, which is a lot better than what we got in the console version. The story loosely follows the events of the movie, with some changes that I personally like. We get to race in five World Grand Prix races instead of the three teams in the movie. I really enjoyed these races since there's something we didn't get to see a lot of in the movie. Even though the tracks aren't the same, they feel similar enough to what we saw in the movie. This game still does have spy stuff, but it seems a lot more evened out with the races. As you progress throughout the game, you can unlock characters and alternate paint jobs to use in the Chrome game mode. In Chrome, you can basically replay any event from the story mode with any character. In the 3DS version, you unlock extra paint jobs just by completing events in the story mode and Chrome, but in the original DS version, it's a bit different. 
They tried to do this thing called spy codes where there would be a code on the back of any kind of Cars 2 product. And if you entered the code, you could unlock a paint job. There were also QR codes that, that could be used if you played the game on a DSi and used the camera. Not much else is known about these codes and they never really took off. There's a whole web page that has the codes that you can use in the game. And surprisingly, there are a few paint job codes in the game that haven't even been found yet or the unlock requirements are unknown. Luckily, every paint job is unlockable in the 3DS version of the game, so they're not completely lost. The Cars 2 DS game really came out at the perfect time. It was originally supposed to be just a DS game, but the 3DS launched the same year, and they decided to port the game to it with some graphical improvements. This game's music was actually compressed to save space on the DS cartridge, but surprisingly, uncompressed versions of Race 1 and Spy 3 were found in the files of the console version of the game. Here's a short comparison. There are some rumors that there were some characters that didn't make it into the final game. Lewis Hamilton and Claude Scruggs were apparently supposed to be playable characters, but I can't find any evidence to back this up. I feel like the Cars 2 DS game is really underappreciated, and I hope this video encourages people to play it for themselves. If you have an old DS lying around, you could give this game a try. I've been showing the 3DS version throughout this video, but they're basically the same game apart from graphical improvements. The PSP version is not the same game, sadly. In the end, I really enjoyed the DS and 3DS versions of this game. So which is better, the handheld or console version of the game? Well, it depends who's playing it. I feel like the DS and 3DS versions would appeal more to Cars fans that enjoyed the story-based gameplay of the first three console games. But the console version feels like a kart racer that tried to appeal to anyone who likes racing games. So if you're a Cars fan who's played some of the original video games, I would definitely recommend giving this game a try. It has some surprises and almost has the charm of the original three games. You might be surprised by how good it really is. Thanks for watching. This was my first game review video, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you played this game before, it would be great to hear what you thought of it in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.